Now think of your outdoors as an extension of your living space. It doesn't have to be big, it doesn't have to be fancy, and you don't have to get a second job to give it a makeover. The projects that I'm going to share with you today are an easy way to spruce up your outdoor living space without breaking the bank. If you'll learn these techniques, I guarantee your imagination and your creative juices are going to go wild. You'll be making things over. You'll be upcycling. You'll just have a great time. So let's get started with the first project. I'm going to show you how to create an applique to spruce up a placement. As I mentioned earlier, if you learn the couple techniques that I'm featuring in today's show, you can make a whole ensemble of things for your outdoor living area. And so the first project we're going to do is these placemats. And what I've done here is I have just went to the dollar store and I was fortunate enough to find a couple of really cute placemats um, at the dollar store. You may have one laying around your house. But what I like about these is that um, it's solid on the back. And I'll show you here, this was my practice watermelon. So, and it turned out fine. So if you wanna practice on the back, you can do that and then you have reversible placemats. So that's kind of cool too. I'm going to set this aside because what we're going to do is we're actually gonna be working on a piece of muslin. And I like to actually make my fabric appliques out of muslin. That way if I mess up, I haven't ruined my placemat. And one of the reasons why I picked uh, watermelons is because they're just really really simple to paint if you've not painted before um, or if you are quite proficient at painting they're just a lot of fun and they're easy to make so what I'm using I'm using uh, fabric paints these are the tulip soft fabric paints and these have a little bit of glitter because I like bling and then you'll also mm. need a couple of um, other colors I have beads in a bottle and this is just a plain black and I have some puffy paint here in green. Um, you could use beads in a bottle or you can um, use the puffy paint, either one works, but you'll need a darker color green and a black. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to base coat, and you can kind of see that I've already started um, with just some white pearl here. I'm going to side load my brush. This just gives a little bit of dimension so you can draw a circle on the um, fabric with a pencil if you need to. And of course I want the darker color on the outside. I'm just going to paint in a circle. Pretty simple, pretty easy. And uh, because this is fabric paint, it's permanent. And you can wash this, although I think I would probably hand wash these. And then I'm just going to fill in the center. This blends really, really nice. And of course, you're going to let this dry. Now, once again, through the magic of TV, this is already dried. And so now we're going to come back in and we're going to make a green circle around the pink circle that we've made before. I'm using a side load of darker green on one side and I've got the uh, this lighter green on the other. And we're going to put the darker green to the outside. And we're just going to paint around in a circle. You might want to save yourself t some time and do several of these at a time, depending on how many placemats you need or want for your table setting. And make sure that you let this dry in between coats. It's really important. try to get that paint down into the fibers of the fabric too. All right. Now 
The next thing I want to do is I want to add some of the little highlights for the rind um, just to give it a little extra something something. So I'm just going to put a little bit of black paint there. I don't need a whole lot. I'm going to mix the black paint in with some of my darker green paint. And the colors that I'm using aren't really that important. You want a red, a white, a light green, and a dark green. Any variation of those colors is just fine. And then I'm going to come in and I'm just going to paint some little lines here. Let me just get a little darker. And I'm just going to give that a little hint. After this dries a little bit, I can go back in and I can make it a little bit darker. And the reason I'm painting the whole circle of a watermelon is there's a little time-saving technique tip that I'm share with you in just a few minutes. All right. Now we're going to I'm going to peel this off because I have one that is already dry. Bring it in here. And now all that's left to do is to create the seeds. So to create the seeds, I'm going to come in with my beads in a bottle. And I'm going to make the seeds. Because I want my seeds to be a little puffy. So I'm going to make seeds. Um, I'm going to start here. Now I know that this is the bottom of what you're looking at. But it's, think of it as 12 o'clock. Put a little bit out and pull it. And then I'm going to turn it quarter of a turn, another seed, another seed. So if you think of a clock, I have one at 12, 6, 3, and 9, and now I'm going to put another seed at 2 o'clock. If I keep turning at a quarter of a turn, it's always 2 o'clock, but it's really 2, 4, 6, and 8, or excuse me, 2, 4, 8, and 10. There we go. Okay. So we're going to let this dry completely because you don't want to mess up any of your um, seeds. But I'm actually going to show you how I would finish this out. I want to be real careful so I don't mess up my seeds. Get a little bit more black paint here. I'm coming back in with a liner brush and I'm going to water my paint down quite a bit, um, almost like the consistency of ink. And you want a nice point on your pointer brush here. And I'm just going to outline. It's okay if you're a little shaky. In fact, I think that's a little bit better. It doesn't have to be perfect. I kind of like that little handmade look, but you're going to go around this all the way around and you can give a little bit of a zigzag there. All the way around. Of course you're going to do this not quite so fast, a little more precise. You go all the way around the outside and the inside, and you're going to let that dry. After it's dry, what you're going to do is you're actually going to take a pair of scissors. Like I said, I'm going to, I'm not going to do this right now, but you're going to cut this in half. And when you do, you'll actually have two halves. And I've trimmed out the rest of the muslin that I didn't need, but you'll have two watermelon half, so it kind of saves you time from having to paint two at the same time. Now on this one here, what I did is I added a little line at the top and then I added a little line in between where the actual melon part meets the rind, so that's a little bit of a highlight. Now let me show you real quick how to make the leaves. These are what I call no fuss leaves. These are kind of leaves that uh, my mom taught me in China painting. So I'm using a flat brush and it's pretty big. But all I'm doing is I'm making half a circle and then with the end of my brush I just make it into a point. 
we'll put the detail in here in a little bit. So I kind of lift this end off of the fabric and I'm only painting with the bottom in here. You'll need three or four leaves. And see the best part about painting on muslin, muslin's inexpensive and if you mess up you can just do it over again. We'll come back in with a little bit of a highlight here. Oops, there we go. Alright, we're going to let all of this dry and I'm going to cut out my leaves and then we're going to come back and do some applique. So all my pieces are dry and now is the fun part of assembling your placemat. And what I have here is I have the bottom right corner uh, so that you can see it. In fact, I will... Uh, let me just turn this around so that it's a little easier for you to see. There we go. So this is the bottom right corner of my placemat. And this is awesome. This is a no sew, no fuss applique technique. So I'm using my pageant applique glue. This is an Aliens glue. And I love it because sometimes you have those projects that... Uh, you know you want to do but you just don't want to drag down your sewing machine or maybe you don't have the right color of thread that's a perfect solution so I'm just going to put some applique glue on the back and this is washable which makes it even better and I'm going to stick it down there on the corner Give it a good pat and next I'm going to arrange all of my leaves. So I'm going to put one here, maybe one there. And I have it so that my, my initial design comes out in front of where the plate would be up here. Something like that. And then maybe a little something something there. And you can kind of push this glue out to the edges so it really seals those edges down nice. And I'm not done any extra shading or anything to the leaves. I'm going to do that next. I kind of saved that bit for last. I know, amazing that I'm actually putting glue on with an applicator, huh? And not my fingers? Okay, here's for old time's sake. There we go. I've put the glue on with my fingers. So you've got built-in glue applicators on your fingers. Okay, so I have my leaves arranged. I have my watermelon glued down. Now I'm going to come back in with that same technique that I uh, did earlier on the watermelon. I have to get some more paint out here. And I'm going to water my black paint down quite a bit. Working with my liner brush again. And now I'm just going to come in and I'm going to add some veins And just some just outline it you could also use a fabric marker if you have one just make sure that it's a fabric it's a paint marker got that line a little thick there there we go 
And sometimes it's nice not to necessarily follow the exact line or the exact, yeah, the exact outline that you have. You can kind of change it up and ruffle it up a little bit. That's when I like shaky hands. Now I'm going to have to turn this over to do this next part because we're going to finish this out with a little bit of puff paint. And I'm going to add the little vines. When you use puff paint, it's a good idea to start your paint. Bring this back over here on um, your table because sometimes they can have a little burst of air and it can kind of spew out. So kind of st kind of start it before you get there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw in some little veins until they meet my leaf. Little curly cues. And I can add a little curly cue there, and a little curly cue up there, and we are done. So let's take a look at our finished project.